name is Chris from the Hypro Service Department. Today I'll be showing you how to maintain and troubleshoot a 2535S plunger pump. The tools required to work on the wet end of a 2535S include a 41 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter Allen, a 10 millimeter Allen, two straight screwdrivers, a rubber hammer, an M10 metric bolt, a pair of pliers, an inch and a half piece of PVC pipe, and anti-seize. Let's get started. If the pump is not reaching its maximum pressure, check that your inlet plumbing is correctly sized for the pump and that your screen is clear of any debris. A worn or clogged valve would also cause a decrease in pressure. Let's take a look. Remove the spring and use the M10 bolt to thread into the top of the valve. Use your pliers to pull out the valve assembly. And you can thread the bolt all the way into the valve enough to pop it apart. And in here, we'll look for any pitting or corrosion. Now that we've removed all of the valves and checked them for any obstructions, pitting, or corrosion, we'll remove the discharge manifold. You'll need to look at the packings if there is a water leak between the inlet manifold and discharge manifold. And to remove the discharge manifold, we will use an Allen wrench and a rubber hammer to take these out. Now that we've removed all of the bolts, we'll use a rubber hammer to remove the discharge manifold. After removing the discharge manifold, we'll want to remove the spacers by gently prying up on them with two screwdrivers in this bottom ridge and check the O-rings for any damage. Next, we'll remove the inlet manifold. Now that you've removed all of the bolts, take the springs out. and gradually work the inlet manifold off with the rubber hammer and gently pry with the two flathead screwdrivers. And be careful not to damage the seals inside. Here we can remove the low pressure seals and the V-packings. To remove the low pressure seals, gently pry them out with a screwdriver and examine them for wear. If the pump has been run dry, you'll notice that the ridges inside will be melted. Next, we'll remove the V-packings by tapping them out. Now we'll remove the spacers and flip the manifold over and examine the V-packings. 
Check the V-packings for any signs of wear or damage and melting that can be caused by running the pump dry. You'll notice that the inside of the packings will be overheated and also the packing retainer may be damaged. Next, let's remove the plungers. The stud may loosen up from the other side, that's okay. And what you're looking for are any deep scratches or pitting, basically anything that you can feel with your fingernail. And next, we can remove the wicks. And then from here, we can remove the oil seal retainers with two screwdrivers. Tip the pump back so you'll have enough room to be able to pry the oil seal retainers out. Remove the oil pan. Now, with our two screwdrivers, we can pop out the retainer. Making oil, you'll want to replace the oil seals. And to do that, you want to gently pry it out with a screwdriver. then we'll press a new seal in. When installing the new oil seal, you'll want to lubricate the outside and inside edges and put it in facing this way. And press it in. Now we're ready to start reassembling the pump. First thing we'll do is put our oil seal cartridges back in and you'll want to lubricate the o-ring and the seal itself with oil or grease and then line up these holes and push it straight in. You may, you may need to tap it down with a rubber hammer to get it fully seated. Okay. Next, we'll put our slinger rings back in with the tab facing down. Next, we'll reinstall the oil pan. Now we're ready to reinstall the plungers. Slide the plunger over the stud and bottom it out. And then we'll use a medium Loctite on the threads for the plunger nut. Just a couple drops. And then make sure that you don't get this washer caught in this o-ring group. Start it by hand. and then the next one. On the other end of this stud, use a high strength Loctite. Start it by hand. and then torque the plunger nuts to 18 foot-pounds.
Next, we'll reinstall our inlet manifold. Now, let's put the wicks back in. Slide this tab down into the oil pan. Put the spacers back on. And now we'll put these spacers back into the manifold. Put some oil around the outside and inside of the low pressure seals. You can start them by hand and it may be necessary to use your PVC pipe to tap them down the rest of the way. Before we put the inlet manifold back on, you want to turn the pump shaft so the two outer plungers are the same length. It will help you to put the manifold back on straight. When reinstalling the bolts on the inlet manifold, tighten them in this order. Be sure to use anti-seize when reinstalling the manifold bolts. These will be torqued to 40 foot-pounds and you'll need to follow the pattern listed in the manual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Torque the bolts to 40 foot-pounds. Now that we've torqued the bolts, we can reinstall the pack and retainer with the flat side facing the crankcase. And then the new packings put oil on the inside and the outside of the new V packings. You want to install them facing this way. Start them by hand. And then use the cup spreader and the PVC pipe to drive them in. Now we'll reinstall the springs. They can face either way. Now we're ready to put our discharge manifold back on. At this time it's recommended to change the O-rings and backup rings on these spacers. To remove them, just take a small screwdriver, pull them off. And when reinstalling the new ones, you want to put the white backup rings on first. These will be towards the center. And 
and then put a little oil on your o-rings slip them over so they're on the outside edge push them back in before we can put the discharge manifold on you want to grease these o-rings so they'll stay in these o-ring grooves and then apply anti-seize to the manifold bolts ahead of time don't be afraid to use a lot Now that you've applied anti-seize to all of the manifold bolts, we can lift it up, get it started, and then you'll need to thread in a couple of bolts. And then gradually Turn the bolts in by hand to run the discharge manifold in evenly. Torque the discharge manifold bolts to 30 foot-pounds. Torque the discharge manifold bolts in the following order. And then recheck them again. Next, let's reinstall the valves. You'll want to put some oil on the valve o-ring. Push it down in straight. 